Hey, my name is Joel. I wanted to talk to you about die-cast hoops. This is a 1983 Tama Art Star. It's a first-generation Art Star um, snare drum. It's basically a Mastercraft snare drum with an Art Star shell. And as such, it has the die-cast hoops that were used on the Mastercraft drums of that time. Die-cast hoops, um, I think, are misunderstood by people, or at least how to tune them or take care of them. I buy and sell drums for fun. I'm always buying and always selling um, things uh, drum-wise, and I get drums that will have die-cast hoops, and one of the first things I always do whenever I get a drum, I take it apart, I clean it, I check to make sure everything's functioning, working, I lubricate whatever needs to be lubricated, remove rust where that needs to be, just get the thing back in really good shape, looking nice, playing nice. Uh, and I'm amazed at the number of die-cast hoops that I get that are not flat anymore. I've got a granite counter in my kitchen, which is not entirely flat, but there are sections of it that kind of are. And I use them to sort of check hoops. Um, and I can lay a hoop down and you can see that it wobbles, you know, and... Uh, and that just means that it's no longer flat. When it was made, it was flat. But at some point in time, the tension was strong enough and uneven enough that it actually put pressure on certain points of the hoop and not on others, and so it wound up bending the hoop. Well, most hoops, like this one, I think this is steel, um, but it bends. It will bend. Most die-cast hoops will bend. I actually bought some cheap die-cast hoops on the internet that are aluminum um, and they don't bend. Aluminum is a rigid metal. It does not bend. If you have styled aluminum wheels on your car and you've ever hit a curb hard enough to bend them, you know that you have to replace them because you can't really bend it back because it cracks and breaks and it doesn't work. Whereas steel rims will bend. So these are steel and they will bend. I've got some, like I say, aluminum ones that are not flexible, but if you take care of them and don't ever um, put pressure on one point more than the other, they work great and they'll last a good long time. Um, the concept behind die cast hoops is to make them very, very rigid. And I can show you here on this particular drum, I have a, a very tight tension on this drum. Uh, and yet you'll notice if I were to detune one lug, there's a half turn and look. I can turn it by hand now. Just a half turn, this thing's, well, it's dropped now because of this, but a half turn and I'm all of a sudden able to finger loosen it, that would never happen with a stamp tube, certainly not a lightweight stamp tube, like a 1.6 millimeter or something. So I can go a half turn back up from the time that it grabs and I'm back to where I was, tuning wise. The reason why I can do that is because it's being held in place by the adjacent key rods. So the, the hoop is rigid. It's meant to be rigid. It's cast and it's meant to stay in that shape and it does a really good job of staying in that shape. I can totally bend it though by really jacking with the, 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 the tuning and bend it all up. But it's meant to stay rigid and hold its tuning. For that reason, diecast hoops are a terrible choice for alternate tuning styles where you want to detune a couple of lugs. Uh, one of my favorite tricks for getting rid of sort of the there's kind of a ring that happens when all the lugs are at the same tension, particularly at the mid-range or a little bit above. It's kind of this almost bell-like harmonic kind of ring that happens that sometimes I don't care for. And the way you get rid of that is take everything up just a little bit higher, pull a couple of lugs down a half turn or more, uh, and that sort of throws things off kilter enough that it gets rid of that ring, but you still keep a similar overall feel of tension and it sounds really good. You can't do that with die-cast hoops. You shouldn't really do it with flanged hoops that are really thick, like three millimeter, like a lot of companies, they have you know, true hoops or mighty hoops or super hoops or you know, whatever, basically three millimeter thick hoops. The same idea applies, even though they're flanged and they're technically bent uh, in manufacturing, they're meant to hold their shape. They're very, very robust. Um, the alternate tunings where you can tune certain lugs certain ways or whatever, that works with thin, hoops, works great with 1.6 millimeter hoops and even 2.3 millimeter hoops, which really became the norm kind of in the 80s. Um, but don't poo poo lightweight hoops. You can do some really cool things with lightweight hoops. And if you want a really vintage drum sound, by the way, a nice little um, sort of an aside, um, get 1.6 millimeter hoops. Even if your drums are brand new and came with 2.3 or three millimeter hoops or die cast hoops, if they're Gretsch or like Thomas Star Classic or something, um, Go ahead and get some 1.6 millimeter hoops and you can really get some really vintage tones out of them because of the lighter weight hoops. It really makes a difference. It's fun stuff. But getting back to, to cast hoops, 
A way to take care of die cast tubes is to not ever let any lug get more out of tune very dramatically with any other lug. So if you're changing heads on the drum, you know, take, take it down maybe a quarter and go across and take them all down a quarter. So they're never more than a quarter off from each other. That way you don't have a lot of unusual pressure in one spot of the hoop on another. You know, you could maybe go a half turn. I tend to do a quarter and it, and it takes longer. Yeah, it takes longer. If you're one of these guys that likes to use a, uh, a bit with a drill and go, you know, to change your heads, don't do that with a die cast tube. Certainly not on a snare drum or any drum that's tuned up high. That's when you're going to damage the hoop. You'll bend it. Once it's bent, it's very hard to tune one lug you know, if, if, the, if it's bent up at one lug to try to tune it back, you're going to be cranking that thing really down hard. It's going to be affecting all the adjacent lugs. It's going to be really hard, if not impossible, to tune evenly. So uh, if you have a hoop that is bent, all is not lost. You can lay it out on a flat surface like a granite countertop or something. Uh, and you can find out by kind of just back and forth, find out where the bend is and wherever the low spot is, put the low spot over the edge of the counter or something and just, just not real hard put a little bit of pressure on it, and then put it back. And just a little dab will do you each time and get it to where it goes flat. It will go flat. It's really not hard to do. The real problem is if it's not round. But oftentimes I find that they're round, they're just not flat, and so I can actually bend them flat. Um, but you wanna keep die cast hoops and three millimeter hoops and really thick, heavy hoops that are meant to stay rigid and reinforce the tuning to the adjacent lugs because of the rigid design of the hoop. You don't wanna, you don't want to do anything where you're, you know, got one under way less tension than another and vice versa. You want to keep things nice and balanced. That limits your tuning options with a die cast hoop. With a flange tube, particularly with a thinner flange tube, like a 1.6, you can tune everything nice and even, or you can do a couple of lugs out. You can do some pretty radical different changes, but don't try to do that with a, with a rigid hoop, like a die cast tube. You will wind up making it very, very hard to tune the drum because you'll bend the hoop. So that was nice and long, lots of bloviating, but uh, hopefully that's useful. If you have an old Gretsch or something that's got a die cast hoop, it's really hard to dial in. You know, half a turn at a time, loosen all those lugs, take that thing off and lay it out on a, the flattest surface that you can find and turn it and see if you can find that it's actually not flat. And then you can kind of carefully sort of bend it back flat again and it will make tuning so much easier. But rigid hoops, even tuning. That's pretty much all you can really do with them. Flexible, lighter hoops, you can do the odd tunings with those. Don't mix that up or you're going to wind up damaging your equipment. Hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching this video. If you're into drums and like to geek out on drums, that's what drum.pizza is all about. Um, I'm going to have lots of drum geek rambling videos and uh, lots that are specific to certain models and auditioning different drums and all that kind of stuff. So uh, please like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. If you got comments or suggestions, always happy to hear those. Feel free to include those uh, below and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.